Yo, what is going on guys? It is Wooden Thief Killer. As you know, today what I have for you is a video that I promised the other day. And what this will be is the Dingo Claw setup mixed with the Scythe. Like I said, it's going to be kind of like a Dingo and Scythe combo. But, you know, both things just, you know, both things are just insane. Like, the Dingo is a beast, the Scythe is a beast. And then if you put them together in the way I'm about to explain, then they're just absolutely crazy. So, uh, you know, the Claw setup you'll see at the beginning of the video. And basically, you know, it's a Dingo with the Reflex Scythe. I prefer the Reflex over the Elo only on the Dingo. I don't know why, it's just something I prefer personally. As to a lot of people that were watching the stream when I was using this class, um, grip, I don't know, you don't need the grip necessarily, but like, my thing with guns is that if they have no recoil, then that is absolutely perfect for me, I just like having a laser beam, I don't know, it's kind of weird saying laser beam now that we've actually had laser beams in Call of Duty, but you know what I mean, just a gun that doesn't have no recoil, so I like grip a lot. Also, rapid fire, you know, that will increase your recoil, which is the other perk I have, so having that grip will just help control that a little bit more, and the fire rate is already really beast, and just having that extra boost is just crazy and my thing has always been that you know if a gun has like no recoil but it has like a ton of damage that uh, or no damage I'm fine with that I would choose that over a gun with tons of recoil and also a lot of damage you know I just I prefer having no recoil and I would take that with no damage as well but the dingo also has a lot of damage output in uh, you know in addition to that and putting that rapid fire on it just makes it that little bit more crazy I believe the dingo is like a three or a four shot at pretty much all ranges which is absolutely insane I don't know you can kind of expect that of a LMG but the fire rate that this gun has and the lack of recoil it has and just makes it completely crazy also i'd just like to add that this gameplay is also like a two minute nuclear and a double nuke fail so enjoy that as well crazy gameplay and um it was definitely a lot of fun getting, and now the perks is pretty much the same perk setup I use as always. Afterburner, of course. You don't really need afterburner on this class, I don't think, because, you know, with a dingo, you're going to be mainly sitting back there. I had, like, in this gameplay, I had a lockdown on the blue car between the blue car and the window. I'd fall back if I wanted to get streaks, which is definitely something you guys should do. Um, I'll go into more detail about that in a second here. But, um, yeah, I had that lockdown, so having afterburner definitely got me out of a few tricky situations when I do need to reload, because obviously I'm not running fast max. And it is an LMG, so it does take a while to reload. So, um, yeah, you kind of want to run off the burner. And like I said, the scythe is insane. So you really need overclock. Overclock is a beast of a perk with this class setup. The best thing about this class, like I said, is one of the best things anyway is the scythe. The fact that you can combo the two. Also, you'll see I pick up the nuke right about now. Um, but yeah, the, one of the best things is you can combo it. So by the time you've maybe gone through your first clip or maybe just gone through a little bit more than that in terms of ammo in your machine gun, you know, by that time... You should have, you know, you should be either close to streaks, have streaks, and you should also have your scythe. And then instead of reloading, you can pull the scythe out, make sure you do get those streaks, and you can either die from there, or you can go on and do more. And, like, in this gameplay, everything went well for me, um, apart from the fact I choked the second nuclear, and I did use that scythe to my advantage. So if you guys watch the video, make sure you take notes from that, and, you know, hopefully that can make this class even better for you. Um, but next up, you want to be running Scavenger, obviously, because, you know, like I said, you want to play a little bit more more passive with the LMG. There is points in this gameplay where you'll see me rushing, and you can do that as well. It's a good idea to keep a mix, you know, element of surprise, keep the enemies in the dark about what you're doing. You don't want to be predictable, because then you're going to die a lot more. But, um, you know, for the most part, you want to be sitting back, and, you know, one scavenger pack refills, like, one clip of a gun, and the dingo has an 80-round clip, so one scavenger pack alone, just killing one guy who comes close, or poking out for one guy, gives you 80 bullets, which can be a ton of kills, as you'll see, which is one of the best things about this, uh, having an LMGs that you can kill so many people in one mag. So definitely be running scavenger. And finally, tactical mask just because people throw a lot of stuns and you're already quite slow with an LMG and that just makes you that little bit faster. Also, Afterburner coming and helping you out with the fast speed aspect of the class as well. But yeah, definitely make sure you run overclock. That's definitely a must because the whole point of this class is that you can combo it with the scythe, which is a, just a sick combo. And you know, if you have that overclock, then you're definitely going to get your scythe a lot faster. And it also means that by the time you finish your first clip of the LMG, you should be very, very close, if not already have that scythe, which is going to be perfect. Um, so yeah, and also I wanted to quickly note, people think that the scythe's bad now, I thought the same thing. I was playing on stream, I was trying to decide what people wanted me to do, and everyone was telling me to use the scythe, and I didn't quite understand why, because, you know, it was really good when the game came out, it's been really good, but they keep nerfing it. The scythe started, I think, around 250 to 200 bullets, it is all the way down 
to only 100 bullets now per use, which does kind of suck. It's definitely not as overpowered as it once was, but it, nonetheless, I put it on. I used it in like first life. I got like an eight man with it, so it's still just as good as it was before. You know, a little bit less bullets, but you can make those bullets count. As you'll see in this gameplay, you want to use the side the same way as me, and you can go beast with it. Um, also, if you haven't already checked out the video about how to use the scythe on my channel, go back and look for that. It's definitely really helpful in terms of using the scythe, but quickly, just a little tip with that. If you do press the triangle or the Y button, depending on what console you want, and you go to switch weapons, as long as you have, you know, no secondary weapon and it's just fist, and I believe it might work with a pistol, but I'm not sure. I think it also works if you throw a grenade or a melee or something like that. Then you insta-swap out to the scythe, which can definitely be beneficial. Like you'll see in this gameplay, I play a little bit more passive when I'm using the dingo, and then by the time I run out of that clip, I should have my scythe, and then I switch that scythe, and I run in the spawn, because the scythe definitely works a lot better up close. So... You want to use the dingo to play a little bit more passively, get your streaks up, and then when you do have that streak set up, and you do have that scythe, run in the spawn and get as many kills as you can, and it can be a lethal, lethal, lethal mix. Like you'll see in this video, um, just try and replicate what I'm doing and everything. If you come together, you can get something really perfect, like this gameplay here. I was super happy when I got it, and you know, everything just kind of went well for me. Also, you want to have the hair. The hair is going to be really useful, because you see, as I was like in this gameplay, I was holding down the blue car kind of area, like I said, and there is a few times... I I think it also is the reason that I died off my double nuclear, that if you're shooting into the spawn, then they will eventually spawn behind you, and that really does suck, but if you have a hater, you should be able to predict that spawn flip and see where people are coming from, and also, there's three main ways they can come from when you are holding down that blue car, which I advise you do. There's three main points on Nuketown, well, power positions, you can either hold down the middle bus on the head glitch there, um... B domination or the red car, but in you know certain game types that head glitch isn't available to you, so I wouldn't suggest that. Or the blue car, which is definitely the most dominant of the three, because you can cover the most area if, and it can be really effective if you use it correctly. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to hate it because they can come anywhere from all the way to the left. They can fly off the wall, run to the right, or come down the alleyway. They can come out the top window, or they can come through the house. So there's definitely a lot of ways they can come, and just having that hater will definitely help you with that, let you know where they're coming from, and make everything a little bit more predictable. Like I said. Uh, you really don't want to be predictable if you're playing because if you're being predictable then people are going to know where to kill you and that is what you need to use against the other team you want to make yourself really mysterious in a way and you know just make it so that they never know where you're going to be even though you're holding down one passive position try and move a little bit around and you know get those kills from different positions like i said when i was close to streaks or if i just felt like i was you know in a little bit of trouble i would fall back to that window and try and get my streaks up and then i would have the hater and then they think i was in the house so they'd just be innocently running through the Matt thinking they were fine, and then BAM! I hit him with the laser gun that is the dingo. I honestly think this gun needs a nerf. It is insanely good. Way too good to be in the game. It, like I said, it is literally like a laser beam. The gun does not have any recoil. The damage is insane. Just everything about this gun is absolutely crazy, and I came across it by fluke. Everybody always tells me to use it, and I never listen because I really didn't like the dingo when the game came out, but then I picked it up off the floor, and straight away I went off and all died, like, I think three off a nuclear with it, and that was with a silent are on so you know I was kind of worried that it would be like the same case as usual where you know you pick up a gun and it's really good and then you put it on yourself and it's just awful but it wasn't the case I put the gun on I just went on the tear and this was one of the first gameplays I got with it I got a few other crazy things with it and you know some of those clips might go into a montage at some point until you know right there but um yeah anyways hopefully you guys can copy this class let me know how it goes for you in the comment section below I'm sure it will go really well because this class is absolutely beast but make sure you do try it out it's a lot of fun it's a beast of a class and and uh, yeah, anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, drop a like. If you're new, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see from my channel in the future down in the comment section below. I'll leave the uh, links to my Twitch and Twitter in the description, and I'll see you guys next time.